Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. No, you're not going away! Sean! Last year, the state spent an estimated £9 billion on just 120,000 families. It does smell in here, though, does it? There's been a fight in my garden, a fight across the street. Little bastard, do you want to stop him from fucking knocking around yeah? So let us get out there and heal the scars of a broken society. I can, if needed, be there at seven in the morning to make sure the children are up. Sean, I buy into it. And be there at five o'clock to make sure there's food on the table. It's really, really not looking good. No, because that time you did that, you didn't come. There's unrealistic expectations to suddenly go from being nightmare families but to the next minute being the Waltons. Vicky McEwen is 24. It's her first year working for the Family Intervention Project, having left university with a degree in criminology. As a FIP worker, it's her job to help Newcastle's most troubled families. It's 7 o'clock in the morning and um, I'm going to visit the Thompson family. At this point, social services are concerned that the home conditions are not suitable for children to live in and the boys are being neglected. It's by going at this time, I'm not aiming to catch them out, I'm just aiming to get a picture of what's really going on, who does what, who's up. It's a starting point to see where we need to go from here. Social services have brought in FIP to contribute towards an assessment and help the Thompson family. Good morning. Morning. Are you feeling better today? No, he's not, because he's uh. got the stickers. He's got what? He's got the skittles. Oh, no. Robbie, come on. Robbie. Robbie's four years old, and I was quite Robbie, concerned that he'd please. been ill and his parents were not up seeing to his needs. Robbie, come on. Robbie, please. Come on, get washed. No one's up that's going to school. Where's everybody else, or is this your job this morning? No, I haven't slept properly. The thing I just got up early. Oh, right. They come down with the, being a mess. Robbie is being cleaned up by his grandma, Doreen. Most children would wake up in the night and go and get mum or dad off to tell them that they'd been ill, where Robbie obviously hadn't. It does smell in here, though, does it? <laughs> but they've got five house cats. There's a strong smell of cat urine. Come here, Robbie, I'm not finished. I've got some on your books. Robbie's brother, Brandon, is seven years old. Morning, Brandon. How are you this morning? One thing that I'm very aware of with Brandon is I've never seen him smile, which is very concerning for a child of that age. Brandon! Mm -hmm. I have some underpants for Robbie, please, and pyjamas. No, no, no. I think Claire's <laughs> getting up. I think this might be Claire. On your boots. <laughs> Just... I'm glad to see you up. <laughs> Claire moved back into her mum, Doreen's house, after splitting up with Brandon and Robbie's father. You're a morning person, Claire? Not really. <laughs> so I'm going to be stuck up, am I? No. I'm going to put Robbie to bed with you. Claire works as a part-time cleaner in the evenings. Brandon, instead of mucking around with that, please. Stepdad John moved in three years ago, shortly after meeting Claire. You thought you were having a lion, John. You were wrong. John, you need this. This is No. Oh. The other end. Is it just in the bed, though? Well, he, he had his underpants on, oh, so... Okay. So it's just in the bed, probably. Yeah. You'll have to tidy your smelly room, though, won't you, Robbie? See you later, Brandon. See you later. See you tonight. In my opinion, it's more about neglect and just general unawareness of what they should be doing. They get fed 
fast fed waters. They're quite open about what they are doing, which in my opinion shows that they don't think it is wrong because they are so open about it. I do get to see to their needs. I love them and all that. I get hugs and play with them and that. So as far as I'm concerned, that's what a parent does. See to their needs and play with them and make them laugh. It's been the way I've been brought up. The way I brought me, me own two kids up. It's to no harm to them. On the advice of Vicky and other professionals, Claire is called to a meeting at social services. How did it go? Really bad. It's like neglect. It's as if they don't do what they're asking, they will push it for such uh, for court and that. And what does court mean? They will take the boys. They'll push to take the boys. If we can't go to court, they'll push to take the boys off us. Do you think you're going to lose Brandon and Robbie? I have a scary feeling I might, because I've been in my life twice now. So I've got a scary feeling I might. Claire has been given three months to improve the home environment for her boys. She knows working with Vicky is her best chance of achieving this. In Jan it was opened in January because... My Newcastle's FIP was set up seven years ago. Each worker is responsible for four families. I was with kids about when she was younger and she was smoking and staying out and... FIP can be called in by social services or housing as a last resort before court intervention. He witnessed the attack on his mother when he was seven, um, when a knife was used on his mother. What makes FIP unique is the amount of time they are able to spend with every troubled family. I think that there's sometimes really um, unrealistic expectations on families to suddenly go from being you know, labelled as problem, nightmare, families or whatever, to the next minute be in the Waltons. I mean, he's had 15 stop and searches since January, um, usually to do with disorder. We're a long-term intensive support service and we can be involved with families for up to two years. I'll be honest with you, there's families that have been with us for longer than that. <laughs> In a leafy suburb on the other side of Newcastle lives Sharon Gibson. <laughs> Sharon is a 43-year-old unemployed single mom. She's being blamed by neighbours for teenagers running riot on the estate. Well, I had a um, huge gang. First it was just a lot of shouting and we heard this loud, like a sword smash sort of thing and... There was my window smashed. Quite funny, actually. <laughs> and I could shout my sitting there. Sean is 14 years old and Sharon's only child. She hasn't been to school for over a year. I just didn't like it, so I just stopped going. I went in primary school more than I did in high school. Sean, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Sean hangs around the house with her friends and 16-year-old boyfriend Martin. Martin! Stop pulling that mouth! They've been together for seven months, and Martin spends most nights there. Does Martin bring a lot of the trouble here? Oh he does I. People bring us bother, we don't we don't cause bother. We'll go out and get accused of dumb and stuff. Oh, just everyone hates you, Sean, really, Hello. around here. Your neighbours are... My neighbours are despisers. But when you look at it, I speak from as an outsider, you don't go to school. You've got the police coming round here. It does look bad. I have that idea, you know, from... It's almost getting to the point that every time there's a knock at the door, it's somebody to complain. Yeah, that was very, very loud. Oh, shut up, they're moving up there to me. Hey! Claire Stewart has a background in counselling and he's been working for the Family Intervention Project for five years. The majority of them have been spent supporting mum Sharon with her mental health issues. But now 14-year-old Sean is her priority. In the last couple of weeks, we've had Sean run away from home. There's been complaints put into the council, 
about bad behaviour and Sean still needs to go to school. So that's, a, that's a big hurdle for us to get over. And there are even more problems. Eggs have been thrown at this house and what's happened is the neighbours, I'm guessing, think that it's actually Sean and Martin who've been doing it. Hi, Sharon. Hello. You're right. <laughs> Sean! I right. need to get this dog. Sean! Sean! Are you all right? Um, having so many people shouting at you and screaming at you and saying, this has happened and that's happened and, and it's them to blame and this is to blame. You know, you've got Sean and our friends getting all upset and agitated and, and they're shouting things um, and you don't know what was being said and whether, you know, who was telling who to F off or whatever. Sean had promised to go back to school, but hasn't after receiving abusive messages and texts. This started because Martin was a naughty boy and went behind Sean's back with somebody who was meant to be Sean's friend. Um, and the person decided to, to get very nasty and send some very nasty messages to Sean. Good girl. Good girl. Hello. Oh, Martin. Sean has agreed to allow Claire into her room to talk about the messages. They're coming in. How are you? Fine. You sure? What about all those texts and messages? They've stopped now, really. Because I've been reading through them, and um, I'm wondering what it was like when that was happening. Were you frightened? Not really. Because I know that, that like, more of our like, texts than that, they won't actually do it, most of them. But, but you didn't want to go to school in case it did happen? Mm -hmm. Is there other reasons why you don't want to go? Mm. Just because of that? So you're going to get the room sorted? Yeah. So when I come back on Tuesday, will it be beautiful? Yeah. Look around. Are you worried about anything? No. Are you texting each other? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, cheery ho. See you later. That was the first time that Sean's let me in her bedroom for a very, very long time. So that, for me, was a big step forward. And she's let me see the mess and how bad it's gotten. There's a lot of work we can do from that. And I don't just mean about cleaning it up. I'm talking a whole loads of stuff about self-image and self-esteem and valuing yourself. Something's gone really wrong inside Sean. Sean was only 11 years old when FIP were first brought in to help her mum with her mental health issues. I was so ill and I was so depressed because I was facing eviction. My benefits were all in a mess. They were just kept, they kept stopped paying us and then when they were putting it back in, I mean, it was weeks in arrears of, with everything. Um, and I had said that I was going to burn the house down me and Sean were going to be in it and, and I was so sick and so they ended up taking Sean away. Which was a bit of a bad time, wasn't it? Hello? Yeah. Am I alright if I bought a chapter house? Not till after half four. Sean didn't want to leave her mother because she was frightened that something would happen to Sharon. For an 11-year-old girl, that was really scary. Sean was placed into care for two months. Claire helped Sharon get her back and has been supporting the family you ever since. You go to the doctors. It'll only be less than a five-minute appointment. How will it be ages? She's going for some contraception. The implant. Um, and then it means that don't need to worry about anything for three years, basically. Um, it's getting her there that's going to be the problem. I'd rather go off with her friends. 
You know, just help us for the appointment. Three months ago, Sean became pregnant with Martin's baby, but had a miscarriage. If she gets pregnant again at the moment, the, it will go into court, I'm sure, to have that baby removed. That's what the social worker expressly said. Um, Sharon made it quite clear that she is not able to cope with the baby at the moment on Sean's behalf, and she isn't, and Sean couldn't manage a baby. It'll only be a two-minute appointment. Sean! Sean! I take it you're not going to the doctor, sir? Eh? Not really. <laughs> Is the mission away? And this is what she, she will do. Um, and this is what she's like if I say, you know, she can't have a friend's in or um, no, they, they can't stay overnight or whatever. She does exactly the same thing. Um, so it's like a battle of wills at the minute. My priorities are to get Sean into school and to get some contraception. But it is ultimately Sean's choice as long as you've made every effort and made it as possible as you can. At the end of the day, she, she makes that choice. Thanks, John. Bye. Bye. Three weeks from first meeting the Thompsons, family Bye. intervention worker Vicky McEwen is working on a plan to help keep their boys from being taken to care. In comparison to the other fit families that you... Millions times worse. That's, what, that's how right. I'm yep, okay. going. No, I'm getting it. What must be spilled on it? What's up? What's up? What? Sam! <laughs> this is Robbie's room. He rips all the paper off. It's not just been Robbie. It's been Brian as well. Brian's been like, decorating straight, straight away, but if you haven't got the money to decorate straight away, you can't. He has it the kind of same way I had it. If we could afford to do something, we did it. If we can't... No, we couldn't. So that's the way it was. And basically, that's the way it is for mine, my boys. How you do that, buddy? Yeah, keep walking up, boy. Working with families, you see that behaviours are quite often learnt from parents and it's sort of a generational issue that's passed on. Robbie, on the path, please. And that can be quite hard because you're asking them to change behaviour that they've been doing for such a long time and it's not going to change overnight and it's not going to be an easy change. I got took off my parents at six months old from my social services. All I was trying to do was crying all the time. So the social services come in, took me and my brother off, off my parents. My dad ended up in prison again. And my mum... And your brother ended up in prison. And my, um, my, my mum just disappeared after they took, took us off us. I'm going to very much work on the areas such as parenting, roles within the family, and trying to get the family to achieve what they need to in order to keep those children at home. Vicky spends the morning with the Thompsons, laying down some new house rules. Right, before we go through this, I just want to say I want people to be honest. I don't want to go away and find that people are upset or whatever. I'd rather we get it all out in the open now because we can only move forwards when we know where we're at. Mm. In terms of in the morning, obviously you said you take it in turns to get physically up and the mm. other ones maybe in bed. What I would like to see is that you're both physically up because usually, and I'm not meaning this in a disrespectful way, people will be up and going to work. So we need the boys coming to you. Yeah. If you're both getting up, then... There's two people there for them. Mm. Because yeah, of one thing that often happens is in terms of especially people involved with social services, they'll say, I'm not hitting the children, I'm feeding them, they've got a bed. Do you know what I mean? Basic needs. Yeah. But in terms of it's that emotional thing and having someone there when you're feeling really crap and down and stuff, it's just responding to that and not just ignoring it. That's, yeah. what, that's what we want to see. We can often get a lot of bravado from families saying, oh, well, I don't need things to be different and what you're telling me, the way I bring up my kids is all right. We need to show them a comparison so it's not always about sitting down and having the chat. It, you've got to be creative, you've got to try and make it real for them. Um, 
and bring it to life a bit. You've got what? The boys are off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The break up on Friday. Well, that could give you an opportunity to take them somewhere for an hour. Oh, yeah, I had the break up the morrow. To the park oh, or something. Vicky's suggestion of a trip to the park is the Thompsons' first outing together in weeks. So you get eight with the boys to go and play? No, I love. If we've all got the money over to took the weather bad. Do you enjoy coming to the park? Yeah. Do you get to come very often? Not much. What did you do this weekend? Absolutely not. Just just had a quiet day in. <laughs> This is the first time I've ever seen Claire at the park. It's not the first time I've ever seen her do anything with the boys, but at the park. But I think she actually enjoys it, even if she's not saying it, because she's joining in and stuff. Over there. And again. Should we lift you? Don't go my shoulders. <laughs> It's important that Claire and John start to see that it does have an effect, it does make the boys happier, gives them something to talk about. And I suppose it gives them that time to be children and inevitably they will mess around and stuff, but because they don't do that at home, I think it's important that they can just be children. At the Gibson house, Martin, Sean's 16-year-old boyfriend, has been accused of stealing the neighbour's football. Just have to wait till the police come, then? You worried about the police coming, Mark? No. We've been here plenty of times. I don't think you bother me. Why are you letting him steal around? People keep asking me that. If I don't allow him to come at some point, my daughter's not going to be here. We've been through this loads of times. We've been where she's just done off because I haven't allowed him. So what do I do? You know how much ball it was? They got a ball out of that garden, though. Did they? Mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to tell you that. Well, they did, yeah. How do you know? Because I was there when I got it. Martin! Come here! Martin. You did go next door and get a ball. Because I've just been told you did. No, you're not going away! Sons. Get in. I'm going for a walk. Where are you going? Find the ball. Out. They've um, smashed eggs on me sitting room window. There's been a fight in my garden, a fight across the street. Just abuse, verbal abuse. Get it out! We never, ever leave our house empty now. Never. You! And you just wonder why I've got rid of my bloody neighbours? It's not funny, Martin. Hello, sir. We went up that way. The little bastard, do you want to stop him from fucking knocking around yeah? Get fucking rid of him. Get in. Fucking damn disgrace, Every fucking day of this show. Do you think people look at you as trouble? Yes. I don't blame them. Why is that? It's with the way I go on. Is, is putting Sharon's tenancy at risk? Because obviously you can't go around upsetting the community like this. Um, and other things have been going on as well. The police were called two nights ago for something else associated with Martin's behaviour. So we'll have to talk about all of this and what it means. 
Sharon, <coughs> Sean, and Martin. First of all, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let your mum read this. All right, Martin. This is from the housing officer to me. Okay, that they've received another complaint about your behaviour um, while you and your friends were visiting this house. It doesn't really help at this point to say who's right or who's wrong or the accuracy of things. The thing is, it has been said somehow. Your behaviour, and as much as you say, I didn't do it, or it was just a little bit, no, I didn't really do that, it was just this, I was just playing with a ball. Whatever's happening, Martin, is you're putting this tendency at risk. You are doing it, you and your friends. Nobody said to me that Sharon has kicked a ball or stood on somebody's hedge. It's really not looking good. It's really, really not looking good. No. <sighs> Why don't you and Sean go upstairs then and give me and, me and Sharon a couple of minutes on our own? Yeah. No, I don't want the cat. I think the thing is, the community's got itself into such a state now that they are watching you all the time. That's the feeling that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. So, let's get it calmed down. Ten days later, Sharon is asked to go to the housing office to discuss her tenancy. She wasn't going to come. I mean, she just flatly refused. When they flatly refused, it wasn't aggressive, it was, she was just scared. And then yesterday I said, how about we go to the house, you need to do this as part of the process. And she came around, she just was, she just perked up and came around, so she, she's here. The reason, Sharon, that I've asked you to come along today with Claire is just to go through some of the complaints made, mainly Sean's behaviour in the street and the visitors associated with the property, the noise and just the general disturbance in the area. You see, if Sean and her friends are causing nuisance in the area, if they are friends, visitors to your property, it falls back on you and your tenancy and all of the complaints, we will then come to you. Inappropriate behaviour has to stop. It won't be tolerated. Um, and we need to just keep an eye on the situation closely. Do you understand what I'm saying, Sharon? Sharon, what's on your mind? Nothing. Nothing. Do you need to say something? No. No. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Sharon and Sean are quite quiet and soft touches with a lot of things. A lot of kids who've got nowhere else to go and who aren't being controlled have ended up coming into the home and Sharon's had great difficulty getting these kids out. Trouble comes and finds a home there and that jeopardises their tenancy. Two months into working with FIP, the Thompsons are trying to get to grips with their new daily routines set up by Vicky. We've actually downsized, we've now only got three cat litter trays. So I've been we've had five cats, and now we've only got the three cats, because one of the cats that we got rid of was doing all the wet, like, pee, urine all over the place. How often were you changing the cat litter trays? Only just once, once a week. week. But now it's every two, one another, or two days. Another day, yeah. Mm. For a long time, I didn't feel that Claire understood the reason for the change. And it's quite apparent that she's more on board now, so I think she understands more what needs to happen, and she understands um, that if things didn't change, then she was at risk of losing her boy, so she's now doing things to make sure that doesn't happen. Ben, shut up, Sam! Hey, Sam! Can I I brought some more charts. Vicky has introduced a system of charts which ensures all the family stick to the new routines. Um, if I didn't have a bath on Monday, it would just leave that, that blank, and if I did on Tuesday, just a tip. Hopefully the charts will disappear, and these 
routines and habits will become the norm. Robbie, what does it say on the chart you've got to do? Don't bounce. It doesn't say don't bounce, you've just got to walk, doesn't it? Because otherwise you might fall over. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to tidy it. Yeah, that's it, that's it. You tidy it up. John and Mum have painted your bedroom, haven't they? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah. But who, who's done this? Me. Not you. Because you know on your chart you've got no drawing on walls? Yeah. So next time I come, this will still be here, but we don't want any new drawings. And then do you think you can keep the walls clean? Yeah. Very good. That is filthy. Decoration and cleaning the house are just short-term solutions. Uniforms off. You get ready for bed, please. Vicky is helping to arrange for Claire, John and the boys to move into a council house on the other side of town. It's been hard, but just got to get on with it. I don't like what's happening. That's having to go separate, with separate ways. But just got to get on with it for the kids. Obviously, the housing is the next big thing because as long as she's living with her mum, she will be a child in terms of she will always look to her mum and expect her mum to jump in and things. We've always said until they move and they're in separate tenancies, we're kind of just treading water and keeping things as they are and the true changes will happen when they move. Hello. Wow, I tell you what, it's much better in here, isn't it? Crying out loud. Grand, you've done great in here, my child. You know your stuff that's to go to the riding school that you were taking back to riding school? Mm. Have you taken it? No, no. I wondered if you fancied taking it up with me in the car. Sean used to go horse riding, I don't know, really two or three times a week. So I want her to remember that she really enjoyed it. So I'm hoping to trigger some memories as well. Sean. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Take Thank you. Thank you. Not going to ride at all? I want to come back. Okay. Welcome up. <laughs> it's really funny. Do you remember Dempsey or not? Yeah? Dempsey and Daisy? Probably Sean would be about 12 when she came. Um, she started off right from the beginning to eventually started to compete a little bit, so she got quite far with her riding. I think she's certainly always enjoyed it. Sometimes maybe just maybe the crowd of kids that she was in with at the time, maybe their interests just wanted a little bit and that just steered her, steered Sean to go down the other track and do other things. Well, this is who Sean used to Thanks, ride. <laughs> <laughs> this is the little girl that I knew, that I knew was there. It's really nice seeing her relating with the horse. Because she loved it. It's a big change. It's, it's about getting out of the house and leaving the house and leaving that little safe world that she's you know, not going to school and not going out. Um, so this is really the first step away from that life that she's been living lately this last year. Um, which is why if she if she wants to, I'll make sure she can get here. At least in the early stages until her motivation and her confidence comes back. text message from Sharon at 7 o'clock on Friday to say that Sean was pregnant. It does change everything. All the plans that we had and everything Sean was signing up to have all changed. What needs to happen is a pregnancy test needs to be taken um, with somebody who can confirm to social services that you're pregnant. 
If the test is positive, Sean will be assigned a social worker who will assess whether she can keep her baby. Not that one. Not that one. Isn't um, I did that right. one wrong. I put it in the wrong thing. All right. Should I put this one on again? Yes. So because it's got yeah. two pink bits, that's a positive, that's yeah? Normal. Is this correct? Yes. It's not something I really want to have to go through, basically. Um, and to be honest, I don't think she's even physically able to go through it. I don't think she is. Um, do you mean carry a baby or mm -hmm. deliver? Mm -hmm. Both, basically. Both. Um, so, are you like frightened for her? Mm -hmm. The only way I can for me to handle it is to just not even talk, talk about it. Yeah. How do you feel? Scared. You're scared? Um, Which, what are you scared about? Everything. Do you want to? Do you want to have a baby? You do? All right then. Yeah, it is scary, I think, <clears throat> because you don't know what's going to happen. It's unknown. You don't really know how you're going to react with your own baby till you've got your own baby, do you? So it is quite scary. I just hope it doesn't turn out like me. Really? Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. It's just because... I think you're nice, Martin. Eight months after Vicky's first assessment, the Thompsons have moved to a council house five miles away. This is your new house, isn't it? Uh, Grandma's house is over there. Yeah, but Grandma's going to maybe hopefully move across there and then she'll live near you and be able to visit, won't she? Yeah. Got any of these bags here? And they go up to Mummy's room. Okay? Okay, it's what? It sure looks a bit heavy, Brandon. So, uh, what do you think of the new place then? I like it. It's the right size for me and the boys, I think. Without my mum being there, yeah. <laughs> Less stressful, I think it's going to be, you know. I think if you mentioned before, this is the way we want it kept. But it will be anyway, because it'll be just me and, up to me and trying to keep it tidy. Um, thing with the cats is, fine, have cats, but we just don't want them in the bedrooms, because we don't want them weighing and things in the bedrooms. It doesn't bite, does it? No, no. <laughs> Just throwing yeah. you out. And obviously, sometimes animals get that fusty smell, especially when the heating's on, so you get that warm animal smell. So, as long as they stay downstairs, then we've not got any concerns for them. We just don't want them weeing in the boys' bedrooms. If she comes in, I'll quite eat. <laughs> Hopefully, this will be a fresh start. They'll get the stuff in the house that they need. Um, I'm hopeful that it will work out. Sean's pregnancy has put even more pressure on Claire to break the Gibson's cycle of problems. Does that get her out of schooling, being pregnant? It doesn't get her out of schooling at all, no. Um, in fact, it's become almost more important that she's pregnant because she's going to have to demonstrate to the people assessing her as a fit, fit to be a parent. So she, there's even more pressure on her to, to go to school. Claire's helped Sean get a place in a school for pregnant teenagers. Sean, come in a minute. Guys, this isn't good. It's really not good. What happened? What happened in here? Seriously, this is really bad. It's not good enough. So, if you, if you want any chance at all to have your baby, Sean, and bring your baby home, you're gonna have to start going to school, and this has got to stop. Martin, are you hearing me? Yes, he is. Is he hearing yeah, me? Know. All right. And that means that you stay here on Sunday night, not at Martin's, yeah? And I can see you going, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I know what you're thinking, I'll do what the hell I like. So, Sean, I buy into it. You know, it's not on. I thought you were joking. 
you have got to be joking. You know we've been through this. You know the lengths we've been to. You know the risks you're running. Not looking after yourselves, cleaning up after yourselves. Um, you're just showing no signs of, of any parenting capacity. I think there's other people who aren't taking responsibility for this. Martin's parents need to take a better share of the responsibility. Hi Tracy, you alright? Come in. So come in, thank you. FIP have no powers to force Martin's parents to help. All Claire can do is speak to his mum, Tracy. Your mum said you can't stay up at Sharon's mm -hmm. <coughs> through the week. Actually, she said you can't stay up there any time. No. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Sean can stay here weekends. Yeah. But you can visit Sharon yes. and yeah. Sean. Yeah. yeah. Tracy appears to be really on board about Martin's uh, Martin and Sean's relationship and what that means in terms of them not going to school, they get together and they're a little gang and they don't need anybody else. So she's really getting involved in, in dealing with that and making sure her own son's going to school. I wouldn't change him for the world. He's my only son, isn't he? I love him. I can't be a little bastard. Oh, I definitely can. But then also you can be a, a loving... A loving son that you want, isn't it? Ten weeks into her pregnancy, Sean's made a decision about her future. In two weeks' time, I'll go back to school. And what's made you do that? Well, it's going to make us look more responsible and everything. Because I need an education and everything as well, so... Are you still all a bit in denial about it? Not really. It's sunk in, to be honest. She's trying to do all of the things that we've asked her to do to prove that she can parent. Um, and she's going to need parental support. Uh, but, yeah, Sean's engaging a lot better. It's been four years since Claire first became involved with the Gibsons. With things calming down in and around the house... Hi, Sharon. Claire can consider reducing her hours. So I'm going to come down and see you and we'll start putting together a closure plan where I'll start to step back. And I would look at a period of about three months of me stepping back just in case you know, mm -hmm. just in case there's something that I need to come come back. So over that those three months, you'll see me less and less. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. Are you ready for that? Uh huh. Well, yes. Um, so yes, yeah. that's good. Yes. You should be just sad to not have to come up here anymore. In a little way, I will be, yeah, because, you know, I've, I've become part of their life and so in a way that they've become part of my life as well. I've thought about them a lot, you know, so... In a way, I'll be sad and in a way, I'll be glad as well. It is like having a friend. It's, it's like suddenly having some, a best friend and then not having that at all, so... Yeah, so it's, it's going to be, like, really strange, very hard. I think I'll cry. <laughs> Ten months on from starting work with the Thompson family, Vicky McEwen is making another unannounced early morning visit. Can I just comment how tidy this is compared to the previous garden? The family are all up and about. Brandon is wide awake. because we've just moved in. Robbie's bed, we don't know why it's always messy. Well, there is one reason, because he's only five. And I'm at the top, as you can see, and um, so 
It's like all comfy up here. Did you like living in the old house? Nah. Yeah. It was all scruffy. Everything was boring except the, the telly at sometimes and me consoles. As you can no see, way. things are drastically Shut different in the morning to where we what? started. What? They wouldn't have had breakfast at home and no one would have been up. Well, it's definitely less chaotic. There's no shouting in the morning anymore. Come on. Say bye to you, Mum. I'm very proud of this family. <laughs> It's amazed me how far they've come and stuff, and just I get a lot of pleasure seeing how happy Brandon and Robbie are now. Have a good day at school. See you later. Bye. How do you think things have improved? There's more, less more stress because we're getting more help. And boys seem to be happy and all. With it all. But now, if help was to sort of slowly stop, do you feel confident in doing everything else yourself? Yeah. What was that on the phone? If we need to get on the phone, we'll do on the phone. Just do something. And... Get the dentist and doctor sorted out. Walkie dokie. Right. See you later. See you later. Bye. It's amazing to see where they've come, then. Um, and that just shows to everybody that give these families a chance and they can change. It's about giving them the chance, chances and helping them to get those chances because some of these families are quite happy. Well, not happy, but are stuck in a rut. And I think just things this morning, just how the. Um, Claire and John were taking pride in how smart the boys look for school. That was a huge thing. Both boys seem happy and are more involved. And more. The boys seem to come to us more. I always, always want to see us and talk to us. You, yeah, oot. Just do things every weekend now. We don't just sit around watching the telly all day. Just be a family. So it makes us feel nice inside, warm inside. So is that it for the day? No, it's only 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs>